What about these statements made by so many people about old values and the disintegration of our society today? What about the incredible rise in teen births or welfare mothers or our world run amok? Your world has run amok. On this I will agree. But your world is not run amok because of what you have allowed your schools to teach your children. It is run amok because of what you have not allowed them to teach. You have not allowed your schools to teach that love is all there is. You have not allowed your schools to speak of a love which is unconditional. Hell, we won't even allow our religions to speak of that. That's right. And you will not allow your offspring to be taught to celebrate themselves and their bodies, their humanness, and their wondrous sexual selves. And you will not allow your children to know that they are, first and foremost, spiritual beings inhabiting a body. Nor do you treat your children as spirits coming into bodies. In societies where sexuality is openly spoken of, freely discussed, joyously explained and experienced, there is virtually no sexual crime, only a tiny number of births which occur when they are not expected, and no illegitimate or unwanted births. In highly evolved societies, all births are blessings, and all mothers and all children have their welfare looked after. Indeed, the society would have it no other way. In societies where history is not bent to the views of the strongest and most powerful, the mistakes of the past are openly acknowledged and never repeated, and once is enough for behaviors which are clearly self-destructive. In societies where critical thinking and problem solving and skills for living are taught, rather than facts simply memorized, even so-called justifiable actions of the past are held up to intense scrutiny. Nothing is accepted on face value. How would that work? Let's use our example from World War II. How would a school system teaching life skills rather than merely facts approach the historical episode at Hiroshima? Your teachers would describe to their class exactly what happened there. They would include all the facts, all the facts, which led up to that event. They would seek the views of historians from both sides of the encounter, realizing that there is more than one point of view on everything. They would then not ask the class to memorize the facts of the matter. Instead, they would challenge the class. They would say, now you've heard all about this event. You know all that came before and all that happened after. We've given you as much of the knowledge of this event as we could get our hands on. Now, from this knowledge, what wisdom comes to you? If you were chosen to solve the problems which were being faced in those days and which were solved by the dropping of the bomb, how would you solve them? Can you think of a better way? Oh, sure, that's easy. Anybody can come up with answers that way. With the benefit of hindsight, anybody can look over their shoulder and say, I would have done it differently. Then why don't you? I beg your pardon? I said, then why don't you? Why have you not looked over your shoulder, learned from your past, and done it differently? I'll tell you why. Because to allow your children to look at your past and analyze it critically, indeed to require them to do so as a part of their education, would be to run the risk of them disagreeing with how you did things. They will disagree anyway, of course. You just won't allow too much of it in your classrooms, so they have to take to the streets, wave signs, tear up draft cards, burn bras and flags, do whatever they can do to get your attention, to get you to see. Your young people have been screaming at you, there must be a better way, yet you do not hear them. You do not want to hear them. And you certainly don't want to encourage them in the classroom to start critically thinking about the facts you are giving them. Just get it, you say to them. Don't come in here and tell us we've been doing it wrong. Just get that we've been doing it right. That's how you educate your children. That's what you've been calling education. But there are those who would say it's the young people and their crazy, wacko, liberal ideas who have taken this country and this world down the tubes, sent it to hell, pushed it to the edge of oblivion, destroyed our values-oriented culture and replaced it with a, a do-whatever-you-want-to-do-whatever-feels-good morality, which threatens to end our very way of life. The young people are destroying your way of life. The young people have always done that. Your job is to encourage it, not discourage it. It is not your young people who are destroying the rainforests. They are asking you to stop it. 
It is not your young people who are depleting your ozone layer. They are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who are exploiting the poor in sweatshops all over the world. They are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who are taxing you to death, then using the money for war and machines of war. They are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who are ignoring the problems of the weak and the downtrodden, letting hundreds of people die of starvation every day on a planet with more than enough to feed everybody. They are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who are engaging in the politics of deception and manipulation. They are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who are sexually repressed, ashamed, and embarrassed about their own bodies and passing on this shame and embarrassment to their offspring, they are asking you to stop it. It is not your young people who have set up a value system which says that might is right and a world which solves problems with violence. They are asking you to stop it. Nay, they are not asking you. They are begging you. Yet, yet it is young people who are violent. Young people who join gangs and kill each other. Young people who thumb their nose at law and order and any kind of order. Young people who are driving us crazy. When the cries and pleas of young people to change the world are not heard and never heeded, when they see that their cause is lost, that you will have it your way no matter what, young people who are not stupid will do the next best thing. If they can't beat you, they will join you. Your young people have joined you in your behaviors. If they are violent, it is because you are violent. If they are materialistic, it is because you are materialistic. If they are acting crazy, it is because you are acting crazy. And if they are using sex manipulatively, irresponsibly, shamefully, it is because they see you doing the same. The only difference between young people and older people is that young people do what they do out in the open. Older people hide their behaviors. Older people think that young people cannot see. Yet young people see everything. Nothing is hidden from them. They see the hypocrisy of their elders, and they try desperately to change it. Yet having tried and failed, they see no choice but to imitate it. In this they are wrong, yet they have never been taught differently. They have not been allowed to critically analyze what their elders have been doing, they have only been allowed to memorize it. What you memorize, you memorialize. Mm -hmm.